Well met, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again for this fourth best out of three, fifth, yeah, fifth best out of three series here. Uh, Boon Hammy versus Viviera. My name is Lark, and with me is none other than Katips. How are you doing, man? Well met, Lark. Well met. We are going into the fifth match of this cycle and in Group F. And we have an exciting match next. We have Boon Hammy versus Viviera, who just took the last match. So what are you hoping to see in this next match? Well, I'm definitely thinking that both these pairs are going to start up with the decks that they have just completely gone 2-0-2-0-2-0 with. That's right, that's so right. So we're going to see the Zoo deck probably versus the Shimmer Paladin deck coming out from uh, Boon Hammy. And this Paladin deck is surprisingly very, very interesting. So it, it's it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Whether or not his Paladin deck is going to be able to, you know, face against the Zoo power. Yeah. <laughs> the monsters and the you know the the jungle. Is it strong enough for the jungle? That's a whole nother point. We've all bought tickets to the EHL Zoo and we have front row seats, so let's see. Boon Hammy <laughs> versus Viverea's zoo. Yep, I mean that zoo, the previous game we saw he had all the perfect answers. Mortal Coils just getting the targets he needed, gets the perfect draws, everything goes in his favor. It just looked like it was a almost like a complete steamroll. If I had to say so, uh, but yeah, I mean the Shimmer deck here should probably be pretty decent, I guess. Uh, yep. Do you think it will be able to hold its own against the Zoo deck, though? Well, as I was saying earlier offline, we were I was really enjoying uh, Boon Hammy's Paladin deck. It's nice to see something different, something different from Zoo. Lots of value from Divine Shield, and I think it has a decent chance starting against Zoo. You, you said something earlier. He was getting, uh, Vivrea was getting all the perfect draws. He was getting the correct answer every single turn. The Zoo deck is not perfect. There is still some luck to it. You could still draw some crap in the first game. I mean, in the early turns, if you mulligan incorrectly, if you yep. don't draw the right cards for Mortal Call, you can get trapped into bad plays. So we have to point out that Vivere has also been extremely lucky with his with his Zoo deck. Yeah, actually that's very true. But look at the starting hand for Viviera though. It's looking very, very nice. He has a Voidwalker, Harvest Golem, Argent Squark, and a Soulfire. Besides, I don't think he mulliganed anything, because it's not like he needs to. That's and right, that's right. Pretty awesome. I'm Boon Hammy, yes, he has the knife juggler, but that's about it. Viverea has an excellent spread of cards for the next few turns. He can open up with Argent Squire, he can open up with Void, uh, Voidwalker. I think he's going to go over with Argent Squire. You know, he's been getting a lot of value. Argent Squires have been the hero of this of this group. Yeah, Argent Squire and Argent Commander. Yeah, exactly. She's the Joan the Ark, man. She's, she's, she's the man <laughs> right there. Sacrifice the life for everyone else. So, so they good. do good. They do good training at wherever Arjun is. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, just a token going to be coming out here. I believe the uh, yep the harvest golem is just going to be coming out here. Trades for that little token on the board, especially against a paladin. And I think he knows a little bit that you know this paladin that come up from Boonhammy is quite intensive on the buffs. So you definitely do not want to leave a single token on the board. So that's just right. That's right. That right off the bat. Viviera has a very strong turn three when it comes to his side. He has a Void Walker into Doggy Play, which would give him a nice little boost in damage against Do uh, Boon Hammy. Yeah, in fact, he can actually trade perfectly here. He just needs to, yep, there, go Dire Doggy, kills off that little uh, perfect little play there. Void Walker. Now, I believe he is actually in a really good spot because that's a 2 3 board. Uh, Board walker, void walker, <laughs> the board <There's>, walker. <laughs> it's a board walker, guys. Yeah. Very, very strong indeed. And Archer Protector, though, will kind of save the day against uh, some aggression. Oh, in fact, a dagger lands onto the harvest moon there, so that's kind of uh, hilarious to see. Now, there is another void walker here for Viviera, and it's unfortunate that he doesn't run into any of his knife. Oh, his own knife checkers, but I think here he definitely wants to trade the dire doggy. Oh, he's actually got a soul fire, and he loses his void walker. I guess that's fine. I guess since he wants to keep that uh, that two one on the board. Uh, um, Vivere is following your advice. He's taking on all the possible creatures that can get buffed, that can get divine shield from the Argent Protector. So he's making a point to keep the board clear, not overcommit with his minions because of stuff like that. Here we go. Here comes consecration from yeah. Boonhammy. And this is sad face right now. Like, Viviera is probably thinking, okay, that sucks. Because look at his hand. The next turn, he will probably be forced to play a Doom Guard, but he will lose it if he. He will lose the other one. So I guess he should just go with the safer one here. Lose free life. 
actually five. He gets a knife juggler. I guess he should have tapped first, so that was a bit of a mistake. He could have got yeah. one damage in. But nevertheless, he's got two pretty decent creatures aboard. And do you think this is going to warrant another Consecrate? I think it's safe for Boonhammy to Consecrate because he still has card advantage. He's going to be trading two cards for one. That's still an advantage in his favor. And Viviera only has two cards left. One of them potentially eating the other, so... Yeah, if I if I were him, I would actually just consecrate here. It just feels so much of a value. So he's actually gonna go ahead and trade here, which is Ooh. oh my god, every he's gonna soul fire. Wrong. Yeah, Whew. this is pretty sad for him though because like he has to, he has all his you know cards that he needed to kind of win the game, but he doesn't want to have them at the same time, so he has to kind of like withdraw on one of them. But nevertheless, it's still very good for him. Deals uh, 5 damage to the face, down to 17 life, the Paladin that is, and still he has no heals yet. Yep. So this is crucial for any Paladin deck. They're going into turn 7, into turn 8. You want to have Earthen Ring Farseer, you want to have an option for Lay on Hands. You want to be able to heal yourself, especially for, an, for a deck such, uh, as aggressive as a Zoo deck. He's going to have problems dealing with his Doom Guard now. He's probably regretting not consecrating earlier and having an answer for that instead. Probably, yeah, probably. And I think that here, um, do you think he should just token, taunt up the token, and then bubble the token? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's certainly an option that'll stop. Uh, he has to be aware that Viviria doesn't have any cards in hand, so he's also used both soul fires, so that he should, that's something he should keep in mind. Yep, so it seems like he's going to Argent Protector the token here. And taunt up both his minions, so mm -hmm. that's very, very good. Very solid. That's practically three minions that he has to kind of run through. That's right. A shield bearer, actually. Oh, and a Scarlet Crusader. So again, really no real direct sort of damage here. So he's going to have to be forced to run his minions in. I believe here he's just going to run his 5-7 to 2-2. Two, two, 3 2, two to the 1-1. One, one. Pop that yep. little bubble there. And still looking pretty good, though, because uh, True Silver Champion will be coming out. Here, I believe. Oh, he has a quality consecrate. Okay, maybe not. He, he could just a quality consecrate. Ooh, just the right turn to have it. That's that's gonna be pretty mm. crucial. Yeah, it's actually. He's gonna probably want to run his dude into the uh, shield. Into the shield first. I think there's really no. Without a doubt, he has to call it consecrate. What? It's too good to pass up. Oh. He forgot. Uh, I guess it's fine. It's the same oh, that's thing. fine. Yeah, that's fine. He still runs thing. one win. Yeah. So without a doubt, he's able to clear that. Off the board, he has two and a one on the board. He has that YOLO rag, so to speak, coming up. <laughs> oh, YOLO rag, please! Save us! Oh, Archer Commander, though. Archer Commander is really good here. Uh, he's... Oh! Okay. Uh-oh. Was that a misplay? I think that might have been a misplay. He was thinking, oh shit, I should have played the Archer he, he looked like he was trying to drag um, Archer Commander into the board, and then he yeah. pulled the... Golem by mistake. Oh no. But here we go. The 50, fire 50. down under and it's going to uh, hit. Oh. <laughs> it's like the it. golem instead. Oh well. All right. That's a little that's a little unfortunate. So we're not going to be seeing that that one turn kill so to speak. Yeah. Um, okay, he gets a pretty decent answer here. He can't play Defender Vargas though. So that's I mean uh Archer Commander says so pretty sad. But he will be able to apply, again, a lot more pressure. Now he's thinking, do I still go for phase or do I hold back? So now, Viverea has a 25% chance of living rather than the 50-50 situation we had earlier with Ragnaros. So he is still not out of this. He still has a chance. That's some pretty strong creatures on the board. He got value from that Divine Shield. Well, actually, he wins the game. He can just silence his Ragnaros and run Ragnaros into the five five into the into the into the face. Like right. He, he can there silence we go. Yep. and he can even true silver champion kill off the two two. Okay. Okay. He that was a misplay, I think. Yeah, I think he could have just won. Well, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Same result. He wants to kill he wants to win in style. Of you know, course. Uh, so here we go, fireball to the face. That's gonna mean Viviera Zudek, unfortunately, dies so quickly and is burned to a crisp by the flames from down under Ragnaros by fire. Viviera purged by fire. We're seeing Ragnaros getting tremendous value as an 8 8 with an 8 to target. And with Tinkmaster benched, again, all of these legendaries coming out to play. 
we're seeing a lot of action from them, so that is very exciting. I really like that finish. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a really good way to end that uh, very first game here in this Best Out of Three series. I'm pretty interested to see how game number two is going to go. Are we finally going to see a three-game series? Or are we only going to see two games now? That is going to all come down to how well this uh, Shimmer Paladin deck that Boon Hammy is running is going to do against whatever Viviera is going to play next. What do you think Viviera should play as his next deck here? Oh well, let's see what his options are. He's left with... I have to actually... Why don't you describe yeah, uh, what the next the... results have to be? And then I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull up a Viviera's decks and see what his options are. Okay, sure. Well, for... Okay, so basically this is... Or he can tell me himself. He's playing Hunter, all right. Yeah, okay, yeah so... <laughs> right, finally we get to see Hunter. Uh, but this is the Hunter coming from Viviera. Now, this is actually a control Hunter, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. This is the control mid-range Hunter made popular late last season, I believe. And it runs Houndmaster. It runs Animal Companion. It runs... Man. Freezing traps instead of misdirection. There's some some amount of misdirection in there, but the point of this is to have efficient removals, deadly shot, and then still having beefy creatures. Now the highlight of this type of deck is of course the Savannah High Main. That's a six five on the board with a death rattle to give you two beasts, additional beasts that can still power your buzzards, that can still power your kill command. So I really like this deck. I'm a really big fan of this hunter control deck. Same. It's uh, it's made a lot of progress ever since uh you know it seemed like everyone was just playing yeah let's go rush to the face and then suddenly oh here we go we have a little bit of a control hunter and it does play out very nicely look at that but if you're actually gonna go ahead and throw down the timberwolf because he knows he's against the sh uh, i was about to say shaman against the paladin <laughs> and he can't really deal with that just because of the way his hair power works here comes misha oh misha perfect perfect uh rng there and that's a five four by the way so that's pretty difficult to run through so we could see, after all the slaying of the dogs that we've been seeing all series long, and even yesterday, we could see an attack of the dogs this time around. Blessing of Might actually going to be the perfect answer here. So, what a way to to use that uh, to use that buff, and it's going to instantly deal with Misha. So that's actually pretty <laughs> decent. About they it. just handed that dude a gun. <laughs> Shoot that <laughs> bear. Here we go. Exactly. Go. But at the same time, you're going to die. <laughs> Sacrifice the life for the greater good, my friend. And I believe that's what's gonna probably happen. Well, he can actually bubble him. So that is an option. Yep, still has the two mana for the Argent Protector to keep him alive. I think Let's that, see how he plays it out. I think that's a pretty good option, to be honest. Like a bubble. Or it's actually, okay, so he's gonna just uh, coin out another dude there. Guess, yep. I guess that's fine, I guess that's fine. So Viviera choosing to play his weapon, which synergizes well with the hunter traps. Because every time a trap is activated, that bow gets another chance. And now again, the Timberwolf is going to be surviving. So looks pretty sad right now for Boon Hammy. Though, Boon Hammy has a weapon of his own, so they can start clashing with their swords right here. Well, more like a sword and a bow. I think we all know who's going to win that exchange. But it seems like he's just going to go ahead and play his little <laughs> uh, princesses there. He all with their it's, shield. It's the Argent Sorority coming out to play. Oh damn, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we've got the we've got the knife juggler here. And he's actually going to is he gonna silence? That's my question. Ooh, that's a pretty bold play. Let's see if it targets her. Wow, that is so lucky. He it is. got oh my away God. with murder with that one. Wow, okay, that's really good. I'm i I'm sorry, I'm still lagging a man. Okay, so he did get the RNG onto the Onto the uh, Scarlet Crusader, so that's very good. Now, Boonhammy still doesn't have anything like a Consecrate, so that's pretty sad for him. That's going to be quite difficult for him moving on, especially with Vi Viviera having a decent amount of traps in hand. He could, he wouldn't be getting much value from Explosive Trap at the moment, so he has the two correct traps in hand. So if Boonhammy decides to play something uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier, or decides to Blessing of Mike one of the dudes or any of, the, uh, any of his other minions, he can just put Misdirection down and deal with that threat. Yep, so Weapon is actually going to be the answer here. It's going to come out and kill off the Knife Juggler. I think it's a little bit of a really pesky minion to be kept on the board. And uh, finally, the Timberwolf is dead as well, by the way, uh, due to the bubble pop. Uh, left with a 2-1 on the board and still has a weapon. Now he can, he can actually um, just trade it 
play a minion and not even attack phase because he still has traps that he can play. Yep, he doesn't want to spend his last three, I think, because he wants to save it for when he plays a trap and gets another charge. But no, he chooses to play it anyway. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Wow, you're, you're miles and a head away from me. What happened to my Malaysian net? It seems to be lagging. <laughs> Well, you know, our, you know our infrastructure. Sometimes it's good. When it, when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's just how it's just horrible. I just want to kill myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to put it. Yep. <laughs> Silverwood Guardian actually gonna make an appearance here in this game here, and oh boy, Viviera is kind of about to get massive value from his deadly shot. That's a freebie. Oh, he can just run his he can just run his owl into the one one and get away with murder with <laughs> deadly shot. Oh, he gets another deadly shot. That's even better. Yeah, but the thing is, do you really want a deadly shot on a minion like that? Well, it, it deals with a shield. It just removes it. So it's dead. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess that's true. Yeah. Alright, so there we go. So the the value there from Viviera is definitely in his hand. But the problem is he doesn't have minions. He needs to draw on his minions. He has way too many spells for his liking right now. And Boon Hammy has a couple of minions here. He has a Slay in hand, by the way. So he's definitely in a pretty good position. He's got a weapon up, actually, and throw down the uh, Acolyte of Pain. So whether or not he's going to attack, Okay, he is actually going to attack right there, so healing himself back up to 21 life. And now, Misdirection is probably going to make its appearance. Unleash the Hounds is there, but I don't think he really wants to use that. I think Freezing Trap is the better, is the better answer right now. He's not going to get much uh, much value out of Misdirection. That's only one damage if he chooses to attack with the Acolyte. And as we know, the... Well, he can actually use Misdirection to see if he swings against the Acolyte, but he still gets a card draw out of that, so I think this is the better option. Well, either ways, I mean, Misdirection is still good because uh, if he uses Acolyte to run into the hero and there's nothing else on the board, it will just trade with the Paladin. The Paladin loses one life, he only gets one card draw, so still, I think Misdirection is not that bad. So, oh. It seems like Freeze Trap is going to be the play here. It's going to proc. That's going to be a 5 mana cost Acolyte of Pain. Uh, which he can actually still play if he wants to. That's right. What do you think he's going to do here? I think he's meant he's going to take a swing at him. And then just launch another dude. Okay, so he plays Acolyte of Pain. Plays the dude this is again. A second. This is the second True Silver Champion, right? He's already used his first one? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I can see it on the side. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so he needs to be a little bit careful there with his usage on that weapon that's his last weapon charge and misdirection probably going to be coming out here he can unleash the hounds but that doesn't do anything i guess his best place just to hide the tiger on the board first so let's see what he decides to play with he can play tiger to have it come down in and come out in a much more opportune time he can choose to do that he can probably play his trap that's pretty safe Unfortunately, if he decides to attack with his um, with this dude first, it might run the risk of running into the acolyte and giving him cards. So that's a, I think that's a risk he's willing to take. Well, nonetheless, it seems that uh, Viviera is actually going to just. Ooh, okay. Oh, well, here we go. The secret is going to be popped, and that is being popped by <laughs> a little dude. There actually hits the face for only one damage. So it's not that not the worst thing that can happen. No. Throws himself against the four one sword of his commander. Yeah, I'm exactly. sorry, boss. You know he was like he wanted to. It's mutiny. <laughs> it's just that it failed so badly. Sunwalker ooh, actually ooh, very ooh, nice ooh. card here, and that is truly deadly annoying. shot. Deadly shot now has a fifty fifty of taking out the Sunwalker. That's going to be very crucial. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Oh, do you think he should actually knife juggler into? The wolves. I mean, he has enough mana for everything, so I think he should just go. All right, here we go. So probably should play the knife juggler first. There we go. The knife juggler is going to be placed on the board. Down comes lucky the pop, lucky pop. There we go. Out comes the shield. Where does the other one land? It is going to land on the face. So that's pretty good. So I think that's a lot of value from deadly shot also because it prevents. Uh, Deal using Deadly Shot just destroys the minion. It doesn't do any damage to him, so Boonham, he can't get any cards off of that trade. Yep, and here I believe that he, does, he still doesn't have his Consecrate, so he can't deal with this. So that's a little bit unfortunate. He does have a quality. Blessing of Kings is there, by the way. Now, Lay in hands, and, wow. Oh, there we go. There's the Consecrate. But he doesn't oh. have enough mana to play it. So I guess he should probably play the Shield, or not even? I think he can... Hmm. He can take a swing at the 
The five one? Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking actually against the knife juggler. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty good choice as well. But he's just gonna do it and end the turn. Oh, goes for face. That's an face, interesting. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Explosive trap coming out. Explosive trap is really good here, but again, he's gonna lose his entire board. We all know what's in hand for uh, Boon Hammy, and that's the concentrate. Concentrate's gonna be able to get a lot of value here. So the trap is played. He yep. trades the minion, and he hero powers up. Tiger, tiger, burning bright with consecrate on the board. Kabu. Oh. There we go. Instant win there for uh, Boon Hammy. And now Viviera is down to 17 life, but the thing is, he's still gonna win the race. The heal has already been used. He can just keep here powering up, honestly. But of course, Arsha Commander is in hand for Boon Hammy. You can always play that if he wants to. There are always um, Farseers as well. He, can, he, he hasn't played either of his Farseers, so that can still bring him up. Mm -hmm. So there we go. A reinforce and just a little dude there. 50 50 bro or bro girlfriend oh he goes for the bro oh uh, why would you chase after girlfriend come on <laughs> the shield is too strong now we're definitely gonna see a blessing of kings on it and maybe even a blessing of wisdom and that would probably just swing into the three five so that's pretty good i actually think that he should do that He's probably thinking, could that be another misdirection and work against me? Or could it be freezing trap to get rid of it? He doesn't know that it's an explosive trap because we've only seen one of each freezing trap and misdirection. So that might be his consideration right now. Yeah, and that's why he's like just pulling back on his, uh, on his, uh, you know, his cards in hand. Now, yeah. he can potentially just attack into the face. I think that's the best way to see what trap it is. It's explosive, yeah. so it still survives. He can still buff it up and still shield it and still put Blessing of Wisdom. <laughs> I think what he needs now is a ton on it because he is dangerously low in life. So here I think, yeah, Arjun Commander the better play. Just go for face. Or do you think he should just kill off the 5 I mean, he is actually at 8 life, so he probably should. Blessing of Kings comes out, kills that instantly. And uh, that's really good. So now again, the Hunter. Oh, the Hunter actually might be able to win this game without a taunt. Oh boy. Without a taunt, that is going to be the game. Well, Viverea, wow, representing Team Hunter. Okay, he can actually do this. He can Avenging Wrath and hope that it hits the Tiger. Oh, that's a pretty tall order for only eight charges on that. Yeah. Okay, let's see. How much damage can he do in one turn right now? I think he can. Like Avenging Wrath plus the hammer should be able to deal a lot of damage. More than enough damage. Wow! That is the luckiest thing ever. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Wow! Okay, bro. Okay. Well, he, either ways, I think he's still gonna win this game. Hammer of Wrath to the face plus the 8 damage plus the 1. And he will be down to 1 life only. Oh, that's unfortunate. Vivirea, just two damage away from yeah. from possibly taking it. That's pretty unfortunate. That is crazy. Wow. That yeah. RNG, man. The five damage went to the tiger. How lucky is that? Well, oh yeah. Oh, there is there is one thing, though. He could have equality. That would have also made it a hundred. Yeah, yeah that, you're right. You're right. To be honest, actually, he would have died there, wouldn't he? If he equality more of the charges would hit the face, then he could hammer the face, and then he can run his defender, I mean, Archie Commander into it, and he could have won that turn. That's right, that's right. That was a, I think that was a misplay, you're right. Yeah, so it seems like that's a little bit unfortunate for uh, Boon Hammy, but either way, he still wins nonetheless, and that's going to be another clean 2-0 victory. So this is a pretty interesting group. It seems everyone just seems to be taking games off of each other, and Viviera, unfortunately for him, he's going to be down with only two points. Boon Hammy looking really good in the lead right now. He with four points and I do believe that the next match is going to be the last one and that's going to be Artro versus Heldekarite and are you excited for that one man? I'm excited but before that I'm really excited I, like I, I was saying earlier I'm really really proud of this Boon Hammy's uh, what do you call it? It's the Shiner Paladin? Sh shimmer, Shimmer. Shimmer Paladin. Yes, I'm really happy of uh, the performance it's doing. We're seeing a lot of value from those Divine Shields, from those buffing up of the minions in the in the shields themselves. 
getting a lot of value from team from the Argent Academy with the Argent Squire, Argent Protector, and Argent Commanders. Getting a lot of value from Taunt. Sunwalker, of course, making an appearance, g being a lot of uh, big threats towards the end of the game. So I'm really happy for this Paladin deck. But yes, up next, we do have R2 versus Helda Krite. Will it be a Legend of Helda, or are we going to see R2 with an upset? So stick around with us for the next match. We are going into the last game of Group F for Cycle 2 of Season 1, The Road to Northrend for EHL.